All right, everyone, we're going to get started. Today is May 17th, 2010. This is going to be a special FX Street, FXDD 4X training. Very, very glad that you could all join us here today. So now let's get going. First off, I'm going to give everyone a disclaimer. The disclaimer is we do not give buy, sell, or hold recommendations, and that trading is risky. You want to make sure you trade only with risk capital that will not affect your lifestyle. And so today's show is going to be, it's the first in a series of four called Anticipating the Forex Trends. This is part one, Foundations for Trading Forex. Presenters today, this is so exciting for us to be doing this. We're going to have Greg Michalowski come on. He's our FXDD Vice President and the Chief Currency and Trading Analyst at the company. Many of you know him from his speaking engagements and his work on the FXDD commentary pages. And it's always a pleasure for myself to work with him. I'm Sean Powell. I'm one of FXDD's national trainers. Between the two of us, we've been in the Forex market a long time, and I think you're going to get great benefit out of this presentation today. Now, just a little bit about FXDD. Well, one of the things that FXDD does is we sponsor the Red Bull Formula One team. We had a victory this weekend at Monaco, which is fantastic. Also, like to let you know that whenever we have a victory, we offer an 8% funding bonus to all accounts. So what that means is you can put money into your trading account and get an 8% bonus on that. All of the details are available at fxdd.com. And we also have a trading contest going on right now. This is probably one of the most exciting trading contests in the industry simply because we're giving traders an opportunity to win two Red Bull Racing Team Paddock VIP passes, also including $5,000 for travel and accommodations for one of the next Formula One races. Definitely go and check out the mini site. You can go through fxdd.com for all of the details. And so very, very exciting. Mark Weber was the driver that uh, won on our Red Bull team. So now let's go in and talk about webinar housekeeping. So we're going to do a training today on Forex market analysis, trading strategies, and about how to find the opportunities for yourself, as Greg always says how to fish for your own opportunities. Please participate and make it great by asking lots of questions. I'll be me, uh, moderating in the chat window here along while Greg is speaking. Once Greg goes to Q&A, we'll take some of these questions. We'll feed them to Greg. Greg will answer them. Now, you can learn more about Greg Michalowski at the FX Street blog, and it's FX Trader. Give me, someone give me a yes. All right. Uh, I'm going to assume that's uh, everyone now. Uh, the next question is, can everyone see the PowerPoint saying anticipating the Forex Trends Part 1? Yes, from when? Uh, okay, Harley, yes, go. Okay, good, good. All right, well, uh, t today, as uh, Sean mentioned, uh, well, we're talking about anticipating the Forex Trends. And this is going to be, this is a series of uh, talks that I'm going to be giving uh, through the FX Street uh, um, uh, platform, uh, through their webinar platform. And... Um, uh, what what uh, it, it's based on is my my ideas about what the, you know how the market uh, works, the foundation of for successful traders, and and then we'll get later on as it, the the parts go on and the series goes on, we'll get into more detail as far as uh, how the tools we're going to use, how to look at the market and all uh, all. So it's it's a little bit different than maybe what you're used to, uh, but uh, you know the fact is I think is that the FX Street is a great portal uh, mainly for a lot of retail clients and. And that's why uh, I work for and with and uh, is the retail client base. Um, and, uh, you know, we're not dealing with necessarily institutional people. Most of the people who are institutional people have other uh, avenues of uh, information that they may have, uh, go for uh, in order to find out information about the market. So um, the fact that there are, you know, so, so many people here in the room here today uh, suggests to me that, the A, A you're, you're mostly retail uh, clients looking for education, looking for uh, ways that you can understand the market, how you can make yourself uh, better. If you know, let's uh, let's face the facts. If you are um, uh, really, really successful as a trader, um, you probably wouldn't be listening to these uh, webinars. You probably have your ideas all together already, um, and you'd probably be trading and watching the markets uh, as the uh, looks like the euro gets hit uh, pretty hard here. Uh, so uh, that's what you you would be uh, doing. Uh, if you're looking looking to come to these uh, webinars to uh, see, see uh, if I should uh, say that the euro is a buy or sell, um, as Sean mentioned, I try to teach our traders how to fish. I don't tell you how you know what to do now uh, because I don't know your situation. I don't know uh, what your uh, you know wh where you are as far as your position goes. All I know is what the current market is right now, and I analyze the market in a systematic way that uh, tries to keep things uh, um, under control for. Uh, retail uh, foreign exchange, uh, uh, foreign foreign uh, forex traders, and uh, so today's uh, first lesson is really going to be about the foundations of 
of Forex traders about what it takes to be uh, uh, a successful as a Forex trader. And uh, the first thing uh, that I'm going to do, and, and again, this may be review for some, some of you, but it may, it, what I often find is that it opens up a lot of eyes, um, and, it, and people tend to say, oh yeah, I didn't think about that, oh yeah, I didn't think about it, or why am I doing this, how am I doing this, what is the foundation that's going to make you, um, uh, uh, you know, a really successful trader. So, through my years, and I've had 10 years in the retail foreign exchange industry, that's a lot of hours of watching traders and seeing what makes them successful and what makes them not successful. And prior to that, I was uh, 15 years trading for uh, large uh, center banks. I worked for Citibank. I worked for Credit Suisse First Boston. Uh, 10 years at Citibank. Uh, four, four years for um, uh, Credit Suisse First Boston. And then I moved over to uh, FXDD. But uh, anyway, the, I, I've, I've figured out that there are six attributes of successful traders. I'm going to zip through these or go through these and, and, and make sure that you are on board and you have these attributes because missing one of these attributes is going to put you behind the ball and it can actually cause you to fail. Uh, so one of the first attributes uh, that all, all traders uh, should have or successful traders is that, that they have a skill or aptitude for trading. Uh, in order to be successful, you have to ha understand the markets. You have to have a desire to understand the markets, desire to increase your level of skill. And the fact that you're all here today says to me, that you are interested in doing this. You are taking the time to try to develop your skills. And that puts the pressure on me to try to make sure that you are going to get there. You're going to get to a finish line. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to improve from, uh, from yesterday to today. So you need to have skill or aptitude, uh, but you also need the desire to do it. And that's important because, you know, we can all, you know, like my wife's an accountant. I can, uh, if I wanted to become an accountant, I, I think I could. I could go back to school. Uh, I took accounting courses in, in college. But you know what? I don't have any desire to do it. I don't have any, uh, you know, I don't have the, 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 the needed desire, uh, the, the skills to do it. And I don't have the desire to do it. So the fact that you're all here and trying to develop your skill or aptitude is, is great. Now, at some point or another, some of you may actually look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what? I don't have it. I don't have what it takes to do this. And that's okay, you know, but you have to. You have to um, uh, understand that you do need some skill. You do need some aptitude in order to be a successful trader. Uh, so that's attribute number one. Uh, the second attribute of most successful traders or what successful traders have is a desire to practice. Now, uh, practice uh, doesn't necessarily mean uh, just going to a demo platform and, and doing uh, demo trades. A lot of people like to have a little skin in the game. Have, you know, they may open a, a mini account or a micro account and trade, trade that way. And that, was, that, way is a, uh, that is a good way of practice. Another good way of practice, and the one that I prefer, is really w monitoring the market, watching the market, uh, just paying attention to what happens after economic numbers. See how the market reacts uh, when it breaks through a moving average or a trend line. Getting familiar with what happens in the market, seeing the rhythm, feeling the rhythm of the market, uh, is is all comes under the uh, the umbrella of practice in my eyes. And so, uh, you know, for every hour that you may spend uh, trading, trading. Uh, you may you may want to um, uh, uh, spend an equal amount of time or some sort of time uh, practicing as well. Uh, the third attribute of successful traders is you always need to evaluate and know your risk. You need to evaluate and know your risk. I have a couple rules. If you don't know your risk, don't do the trade. And the other rule is if the risk is too great, don't do the trade. But, but it, it is not good enough to put a trade on because you think the market's going down. That's not a good not enough reason because you don't know where the risk is. If the market's moving down like it just did uh, in the euro down to you know, 122.80s or something and it's, and it's moving at a fast pace and you don't know what your risk is, don't do the trade. Always know where your risk is because if you don't know your risk, that's open-ended stop. That, will, that means that you don't have a stop loss level. And if you don't have a stop loss level, that often leads to oversized losses uh, in, in your account. So you always need to evaluate, evaluate and know your risk. The fourth attribute of successful traders is to is to have and execute a plan. You need a plan. Everyone needs a plan in order to be execute to, to be successful in what they do. A, a, a football team has a plan. They have a game plan and they execute that game plan, even if it doesn't do, go go according to their plan. Uh, you know how they thought the plan would be would go. They still execute that plan. And the same uh, goes true for your forex. You have to have a plan. And uh, we're going to go through plans as this series progresses. I'm going to show you what I look at, how I look at it, why I look at it, most uh, most importantly, why I look at it, 
and then the tools that I use in order to evaluate the market and to find trends in the market. And that's uh, that's going to be our plan. And we'll go through that as time goes on. The fifth attribute uh, of, su- of uh, uh, successful traders is the ability to control your fear. Fear is a trader's worst enemy. You need to be able to control your fear. And there are um, uh, there are a, a number of ways that you can do this. Uh, and uh, and that goes into my plan as well. My plan is uh, totally designed in order to make sure that our traders un- are able to control their fear, not by themselves, just by the plan. Plans often are ways that people can uh, are, are ways that people can control their fear. And the plan has to make sense. You have to buy into the plan, and then once you buy into the plan, you understand your risks. You're able to control your fear, uh, and you, you're more successful because of that. You're not worried about how about uh, uh, losing money because you know you know that you've done the uh, the homework and if you do lose money that's okay that's part of trading uh, but uh, what I'm uh, geared uh, what I uh, focus on is trying to control that uh, uh, the, the losses that you do have uh, and that in turn helps control your fear and finally the sixth attribute of successful traders is you need to have enough greed now someone said you know is greed good and I said you know you do have to have some greed. You have to have greed in a lot of things in life. You have to have, you know, greed to move ahead in in your job. You have to have greed to, um, uh, you know, you almost have to have greed to uh, be in uh, anything successful. You have to be able to, you know, want to go to the next step, to move to the next step. Now, in front, in for, in 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 terms of trading, um, what I, what I refer to uh, greed as uh, is that you have to be greedy, especially when you're on the trend. Especially when you, you're able to anticipate a trend and possibly stay on that trend. And, uh, throughout this, uh, series, we're going to talk about ways that you can better anticipate trends. And if you can anticipate a trend, you have a better chance of staying on that trend. And if you, if you, uh, if you, uh, want to stay on that trend, you have to have a certain amount of greed. And greed, so greed in that case is good. But you have to, you know, if you have the opportunity to to have some greed, to take some uh, uh, greed, uh, then then you should uh, take advantage of that. Um, so those are my six attributes of successful traders, and I think everyone should pay attention to them um, and uh, make sure you you know you jot them down, or maybe you can get this uh, uh, PowerPoint at the end of the presentation. But you have to make sure that you understand them uh, and that uh, you don't you don't let any of these lapse because if you have one of them lapse. And let that lapse. The chances are you're not going to be successful as a trader. So uh, now I'm going to have I have two pop quizzes here today, and the first one is, uh, do you have a mission statement for your forex trading? And the and the question is, and and the answer is yes or no. So I just want to see just a, a show of a uh, you know by typing into the uh, chat box, do you actually have a mission statement? Now be honest, all right. So be honest. So let's uh, type into the chat box, and I just want to see uh, how many people have a mission statement. An actual mission statement. Either you know it or you don't. Now, what is it? Do we have any answers? No, no. I have goals. Okay. No, no. All right. We're getting a lot of no's. Try to make correct trades. Okay. No, 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 no. Objectives. Okay. What is it? Okay. All right. I've, I've seen enough. And, and you know, I, I ask this often at, at, at my uh, seminars um, and uh and the uh, uh, when I talk in front of people, and I make sure everyone raises their hand or not, and uh, most of the people say no. You know, uh, the fact is, uh, uh, um, tr- trading um, is a a very uh, lonely business. Uh, most of you out there are probably by yourself right now. Uh, and you are trading, and so you often think that what is the purpose of having a mission statement? Well, it almost makes it even better to have a mission statement uh, when you're alone because uh, you're the only one who could make it go wrong. Uh, I've been to many off-sites out there where uh, we, we develop a mission statement and over a weekend uh, off-site, and then we get back on Monday and everyone forgets it. If someone doesn't, you know, buy into the plan and it all tumble and it all fails at the end of the day because there's always, you know, a few little cancers out there that cause it to fail. But uh, from a trader's perspective, you know, it's a lonely business. We're out there uh, doing this for ourselves. Uh, and uh, really, uh, you know, I think it's, it's best if you do it by yourself because you don't have any uh, uh, counterbalancing or worries about, um, you know, what the other person is thinking when you're trading. It's very unusual for a team to trade, uh, very well. I've tried it before in the past. It doesn't necessarily work all that great. There's a lot of extra fear, um, in, in involved in, in, uh, trading with someone else. So from, from, uh, a mission statement, I'll give you your mission statement. What it should be. And this is, 
this really is a, a mission statement for all traders, and it is to make the most money with the least amount of risk. To make the most money with the least amount of risk. Now, notice in this mission statement, the first part, to make the most money. Does it say that you're going to make a million dollars, a hundred thousand, ten thousand dollars, or whatever? No, it doesn't say anything about how much money you're going to make. In fact, it doesn't really, you know, I, I purposely make it positive. Why? Because you have to be positive, but you can actually lose less money and be successful in your mission statement. People, pay, traders who are losing a lot of money now, maybe after, you know, our lessons that we go through may only lose a little amount. And that's a progression step forward. And that's so you have to uh, try to make the most money, uh, when you're, when you're trading. Now, the second part is using the least amount of risk. And, uh, some people think this is, a uh, um, contrary to what, you know, they're, they're trying to do as a trader. After all, uh, trading is about taking risk. So why do you want to take the least amount of risk? Also, what some people say is that, you know, the more, uh, the more risk that you take, the greater reward, and they want to have a greater reward. Um, that's not true in trading. Uh, what you have to do is be able to control your risk, control your losses. Um, find those areas, however, find those points in the market w which are, put the odds in your favor that allow you to anticipate a trend and hopefully stay on that trend. Uh, for a long time, in which case you're, you're, you're risking a very little amount, uh, to make the most amount of money. Uh, so this is my mission statement. This is what everyone's mission statement should be in, in trading. Make money and keep the risk to a minimum. And if you do that, you're gonna be, you're gonna be, uh, successful, more successful as a trader. So before you even start the day, write the, um, uh, uh I'd like everybody to just say, you know, that my mission today is to make the most amount of money with the least amount of risk. It comes up in my mouth every day. And I think about it every day. All, all good traders think of their mission statement and they follow that mission statement. So now I get into the second quiz of my, uh, second question of my pop quiz, uh, 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 you know, uh, my questions. And this is most money is lost by retail traders when the market is trending higher or trending lower or the market is non-trending. And, uh, you know, I want to ask you to type in here, uh, but, uh, invariably when I ask that, um, is uh, is that the most money uh, is lost uh, by retail traders when the market is trending? Peter got it right, and Harley got it right, and Ron got it, got it right as well. Uh, but the, and this is contrary to what most people uh, might might think. Uh, after all, we're all taught to you know to follow the trends, to stay in the trends. But the fact is, folks, and 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 you know, I come from um, a you know a a uh, from the from the foundation or from a business. Whereby we get this, to, you know, to see what retail traders do, and most of the retail traders uh, are are not very good at trading the trends. They're actually okay uh, in the uh, in the in the non-trending uh, markets, uh, but they often um, are not very good in trading the trends. And there are a couple reasons uh, for that. And one of the theories that I have uh, it, it, for not catching the trends is I do think that uh, retail traders try to be too fundamental. They try to uh, tell you and think that, um, okay, they're going to be smart and they're going to know why the market is going to move up or down. And the fact is, I don't care what you think about the market, uh, whether you think it's going to go up or down. I care what the market thinks. And so as a trader, um, you know, it doesn't matter what the story is, whether the stock's going up, oil's going up, or, or whatever. What you have to think about is uh, what the market pr what the market is telling you. Uh, the, uh, the, the price is going to do or potentially do. And the only way you can gauge the market bias is through the market price. And so you have this market price and it's going to tell you whether the market is bullish or bearish if you use the right tools. And we're going to go through uh, those tools a little bit later, what tools you can use in order to, 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 to figure out what the market is actually telling you as far as the bias of the market. But the important thing to realize is that, you know, you <coughs> Excuse me. You don't want to uh, try to um, push or bully the market into doing what you want it to do because it really doesn't matter. The market is much, much bigger than you, and so you have to follow and try to think like the market and be like the market. It's kind of like a Caddyshack. Be the bull. You know, you have to be the market. You have to think like the market, and the more you can think like the market, the better chance you are going to be successful because the market is going to move the price to the upside or the downside. You just have to follow the clues that the market gives you. Uh, the next uh, theory for not uh, catching trends uh, is this, is that uh, people have a fear of failure. And uh, uh, so, uh, you know, let, let me, uh, you know, 
give you an example of that. You put a trade on and automatically, you know, to go long the euro, and you automatically think that the price is going to uh, go down, and you wish you were the, the other way. You're fearing failure. You're fear, fearing the fact that you're going to lose money. And so a lot of people cannot stay on trends if they fear failure. They, uh, they, they, they almost reverse it, and then the market goes, you know, the way that they thought. They have to do all this homework as far as doing the plan, and then they have this fear of failure. So they end up uh, getting out of the trade uh, at, a, at a small loss and uh, going the other way or end or, end or you know, not even putting on a trade. So that's one fear. The other fear that, that I, I think prevents people from uh, trading the trends and catching, uh, staying on the trends is the fear of success. And this is uh, not very, um, uh, people don't realize this uh, fear that they do have. But let me give you an example. When the market uh, is non-trending in a range, um, it'll eventually uh, transition to a trend. And when the market starts to trend, the people are already uh, um, uh uh, conditioned to be thinking about the non-trending type market. And so your mind says, okay, the market is going to do what it did yesterday and the day before. You're not anticipating a trend, in other words. Now, um, if you don't anticipate a trend and the market is going sideways and the market starts to go down like it did a few weeks ago when the euro started to go down, uh, you started to buy dips. Um, and, and you may have been short at the top and the market goes down and, and, and it gets to a, a support level. Uh, from a past price, and you sit there and buy against that support level. Well, that's uh, because you fear success. You fear that the market is going to move back to where it did over the last couple of weeks, over the last week or whatever, and move back, and, and, it's, and some boogeyman is going to come out and take all your profit away. So you have this fear of being successful, of having great trade location, of being on the trend, when, but you don't even know it's a trend, but if you can anticipate the trend, you would. But you have this fear that success is going to uh, be taken away from you. So you club cover your position. And what ultimately happens next? The market continues to trend in the direction, let's say, to the downside like the euro did a few weeks ago. And the market trends down. And what happens at the next support level? Well, you just bought about, you know, 50 pips ago. And it comes to the next support level. What is your mind going to tell you to do? It's cheap here. I'm going to buy it. So you buy it at that support level, and the market does indeed go up about 10 or 15 pips, not enough for you to take profit, and then the market quickly reverses and starts to trend down again. And then it gets to the next support level, and what do you do? You sit there and buy that dip again. So you do this about two or three or four times, and eventually the market's market, then you eventually you hit the bid and get out of the mar out of your four-lot position instead of a one-lot position, and you end up uh, uh, losing a lot of money on that trade. On that trade, it all started with the fear of success at the top, folks. That's where it all started. Uh, you had to, you had a great location. You anticipated, or you were on a trend. You just didn't know it, so you had this fear of success. You got to control that fear of success, and we'll talk about that a little, little bit. And the final thing that uh, why people don't catch trends is because you don't anticipate a trend. You need to anticipate a trend in order to catch a trend. If you if you can, if you you know, have a good idea that the market is going to trend, and there are clues that the market gives you. You can anticipate a trend, and then all you have to do is get the direction right. And guess what? There are some tools that there are out there that'll teach you or show you uh, which way the direction is going. So that's my theories on not catching trends. Now it's your job to try and catch these trends. So if we have a mission statement, um, we also have have a game plan. And some of you had said that you have goals or you have. Um, uh, objectives and stuff like that. Maybe that's, uh, that comes under the, the, what I call the game plan uh, because we have this thing where I'm going to make the most amount of money with the least amount of risk. Well, that doesn't tell me how I'm going to do it. Uh, but what we do know is that people don't do well trading trends. So uh, if you don't do well trading trends, what's your goal? The game plan is to trade the trends. And the other thing that we have to do is we need to, uh, with the least amount of risk. And how do you... Um, uh, 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 and, and, and in order to uh, keep the uh, or the importance of having the least amount of risk, uh, because it keeps your fear to a minimum. And it's my my under uh, belief uh, that fear is a trader's worst enemy. If the trend is your friend, the opposite of a trend is your fear, because fear, as we saw, fear of success, fear of failure, uh, or fear of failure, fear of success, is what causes traders to not stay on the trend. It causes them to get out of the trend. And that is what we have. We have to keep uh, our fear to a minimum so we're able to stay on the trend. So our game plan is to trade the trends and keep 
fear to a minimum. That's how we're going to do it. Fear is a thief. Um, and so with any game that you do play, excuse me, any game that you do play, there are always rules. And my first rule is uh, what I call the KISS principle. And I think everyone out there knows what the KISS principle. And if I asked you to type it in, you'd all write, keep it simple, stupid. But not in my book. My book says uh, the KISS principle is keep it simple to be successful. And uh, the, the changing of that last word is uh, very important. So what you have to do when, you, when you're, uh, if you want to trade the trends, anticipate the trends, if you want to trade successfully, uh, you have to follow the rule. And the, my rule is a keep it simple to be successful rule. There's no reason to be complicated to trade successfully. You do not have to be complicated. You do not need, need eight, eight, uh, um, you know, oscillators or eight tools in order to figure out which way the market is going. It, the market is much simpler than that. You also need to think positively, positively. So rule number one in our trading is going to be keep it simple to be successful. Uh, the, the, the second rule, uh, we're going to get to these, uh, um, uh, uh, we're going to get to those questions or those uh, questions that you do have back in in the message board. Uh, we're, don't worry, I'm not going to I'm not going to skip any any uh, any st all the stones are going to be overturned here. Uh, the second rule is this: always have a reason. If you don't have a reason to do the trade, then don't do the trade. And we talked about that a little bit in the um, um, uh, in the attributes of successful traders is that if you don't know your risk, don't do the trade. This is is the same thing. You have to have a reason to do a trade. Don't just sell the euro at 88 because the market is, is going down as we, as it was when we first started this webinar. Where is it now? 123.27. You didn't have a reason to do a trade. The market was just moving down. Uh, but and, and so you always have to have a reason to do a trade, and you also have to understand your risk in the trade. The third rule uh, that we have Okay. Uh, the third, the third rule that we have in, uh, uh, in my trading uh, plan is, uh, we need tools in the trading toolbox, uh, that are, do the three things. One, they need to, tr uh, define the trends. What is our, our game plan to trade the trends? So we need the trend defining tools. Uh, two, we need tools that can help define our risk. Why? If we define our risk, then we can keep fear to a minimum. Uh, if we know what our, our risk is and we're comfortable with that risk, then what does that automatically do to our fear? It decreases our fear. Uh, so if we if we are able to define our risk, we're able to keep our risk to a minimum. And the third thing, uh, the tool that we use has to be an unambiguous tool. And what pe uh, people don't often know what un unambiguous tool is um, uh, in uh, forex trading, or, or or as far as a technical analysis. And what I define an unambiguous tool is 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 a tool, uh, a technical tool that you use that either gives you a bullish or bearish bias. It does not give you uh, a oversold or overbought uh, bias. It just simply gives you, okay, the market is bullish, the market is bearish. And there are a number of different tools out there that do this. Um, and uh, I use three of them. And I suggest that traders only use three tools because too many add confusion. And what does confusion do to your fear? It increases it. So it all goes that back to, okay, defining your risk and making your fear, uh, 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 limiting your fear. So that's rule uh, number three. Uh, the rule number four is this, and I call it the if should rule. And the if should rule says if the market price does X, Y, Z, uh, then the market price should do A, B, C. If the market price does not do what it's supposed to do, then get out. And uh, putting it in, in uh, uh, technical terms, um, I can say if the market price uh, goes above a trend line, then the market price should continue higher. If the market price does not continue higher, then get out. And again, this goes back to uh, what um, you know uh, to that idea uh, that the market doesn't really care what you think. The market, uh, you know, I care what the market does and what the market thinks. So if the market uh, price goes below a trend line, it should go lower. Obviously, if it doesn't, then something's happening that's causing the market to do something else. It's often best to just get out, take your loss, and get out. The fifth rule is you always want to keep your eyes on the road ahead. If you're trading a trend, and what I, what I mean by this is you want to look for targets to achieve down the bullish or bearish highway and try to be greedy when greedy is good. And this often happens when you're anticipating a trend-type move. So let's take a step back and say, okay, we're anticipating a trend-type move to the downside. How do we know it's going to continue in that direction? Well, if we 
reach targets down the road, if we reach targets down the bearish highway. And that may be another moving average. That might be a trend line. That might be a Fibonacci point. It might be a what I call a remembered line. All of these are targets down the road. And if you are driving down the bearish highway and you're going down a trend to the downside and you're anticipating a trend, the only way the trend is going to continue is if you reach these targets. So it's not only important for a trader to get in the trade, have an entry level, but it's also important for the trader to stay on the trend and to reach the targets and have targets ahead of you that you can give you confidence that the market is moving in that direction. And what does that do as well? It also allows you to manage your trade as well, uh, to, to look for, you know, to move your stops down or to, if the market goes through uh, a, a exit, for instance, uh, let's say it goes through a 200-hour moving average. I'll just use that as an example. Uh, the market should continue in the direction to the downside. If it doesn't, that is, if it goes back above the 200-hour moving average, what does that say to your drive on the bearish highway? You probably turned around and you're going the other way because it could not continue the momentum in the direction of where the market was going. And so you have to think of yourself as driving along the highway. You get to an exit. You pass that exit and you just swerve off to the left and head the other way. And that's what you, that's what you have to do with, uh, if you're on a trend, you have to stay on that trend and watch that, uh, keep on hitting those exits along the way. Uh, so that's always, you always have to keep your eyes on the road ahead. All right. So um, uh, one more um, idea that I have, uh, and this is, this is important for uh, people who are uh, trading or anticipating a trend, in particular in anticipating a trend. And there's, a, there's an old Pythagorean theorem, if, uh, if you remember from geometry, and it said that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And the reason why I bring this up is because a theorem is a truism. It's something that's a thing of fact. Every, uh, if you have the length of A and the length of B and you square it, you can, you can get the length of C. You can know that. That's a fact. That's a, that's what is called Pythagorean's theorem. Well, I have a theorem in, in Forex trading and this is, it is this. The Forex market, and this is in all markets, it's not a surprise, but it, you need to understand this. This is the, again the foundation of successful trading. And the Forex market is either trending or non-trending. If the market is non-trending, what will the market eventually do? Trend. It will eventually trend. So if you have a non-trending market, what can you poss what can you start to think about? Market trending. Does that mean you're anticipating a trend? Yes, it does. So if you can anticipate a trend, what is the chances of you staying on that trend? Much better if you uh, uh, compared to the guy who is not anticipating the trend, which is most retail traders. They don't anticipate a trend. So what you have to do is look for non-trending markets and then say to yourself, I'm anticipating a trend. I'm going to look for this market to continue in the direction of where it breaks to the downside or to the upside. I want to make sure I'm on that trend. I want to make sure that the day, that the, the, the longer the market non-trends, the, be, the, the, the more excited I am about a possible trend, trend move. The other uh, opposite of that is if the market is trending, they'll eventually transition into a non-trending uh, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm finishing up here. I'm getting into the tools uh, of the trading. And uh, clearly um, from, from what you've learned so far is that the tools have to, uh, uh, to help define a trend. They have to define a risk and they have to unambiguous, be unambiguous uh, trading tools. That is, give us either a bullish or bearish bias. So the first uh, tool that we uh, use is obviously is the simple moving average. And the simple moving average uh, helps define trends and non-trends. It helps to give unambiguous trading bias that is bullish or bearish. And this allows you to keep your fear down. Fear is a trader's worst enemy. It also allows you to keep your risk down. And it helps define our risk. How does it help define our risk? Because if the market goes uh, below a simple moving average, then the bias is to the downside. If the market should move back above the moving average, what does the bias do? What do you do on that highway? You turn around, you start to go the other way. So it helps define our risk. It helps to find our stop loss levels. Now there are two moving averages that I use. Uh, one is the 100 bar moving average, and that is the trigger. That is the one that I'm going to pay attention to, and I use this because the market watches the 100 bar moving average. I'm convinced of that because whenever I turn on Bloomberg or 
Bloomberg TV or CNBC, what do the technicians talk about? They talk about, well, the market went through the 100 bar moving average. Unfortunately, you know, I know there's Fibonacci's, and I know there's 34, and there's 18, and all of this, uh, and uh, some people use a 50. But the one that I often hear on TV is 100 bar moving average. And quite frankly, I've been following it for a number of, number of years now, and it is something that you, that, that works not, not only in, in um, you know, it works in, in the three charts that I use. I use the five minute, I use the hourly, and I use the, um, uh, the daily chart. So, uh, that's the, the, the uh, moving average I use. The second moving average I use is a 200 bar moving average. And this is my confirming moving average. So the 100 is my trigger. The 200 is my confirming. This is an exit on the highway, folks. This is one of those points where I'm looking for the market to break through the 200 in order to confirm the move in the direction of the trend. And so here's an example. This is a dollar versus yen, and this is a, a five-minute chart. And this was uh, before the um, – uh, I took this uh, picture before uh, the market – or before our, our webinar here today. And you can see here the market moved below the 100 and the 200 bar moving average in the market trended to the downside. Or when the market decides to correct, where do we come up to? 100, 100, 100, 100, four different times. And the market failed to get above the 100 here. Uh, it failed to get through the confirming moving average. And the market trended to the downside. And the market corrected. We came right up to the 100 bar moving average here, moved down here. And then we moved back above the 100. And we used it as a springboard here. Once we moved back above and the market moved up, and where do we go? We went to the 200. We went to the state of the 200, came back down. Came back, tested the 200, came back, went through the 100, break to the downside, move to the downside, move back up to the 100, go through the 200, break to the upside, fail, move through the, two, the 100. And you can see here at each of these points along the line here, the market is either using this level as a point of resistance support, springboard to the top, resistance here, or a level where the market really finds some uh, movements to the upside or to the downside. It breaks through here, moves higher, breaks to the downside, moves through the 100, comes up to the 100, moves down. We get into this non-trending period over here where the market has its uh, moves up and down, up and down, and up and down. But once we decide that, okay, we're going to continue the trend to the upside after trending to the downside, the market then uses the, the 200 bar moving average as support. And this gives you a clue that the market's going to go higher. When the market moves up here and we get the, uh, this is in the New York session, we get the data that comes out at 830, which is weaker than expected New York manufacturing, uh, uh, Empire State manufacturing. The market sells off during these 15-minute periods, and where do we go? We go right down to the 100 and 200 and bounce again, again. And uh, these levels these levels tend to give traders an opportunity to trade against, and that's what you use moving averages for is to trade against, to keep your risk to a minimum. What is your risk if you sell against the 200-bar moving average here? Your risk is about right here. You're, you're trading right close to that moving average. If you can trade near these moving averages, um, and, and just look for those opportunities where the market comes up, test them, put your stop about 10 or 15 pips, uh, maybe 15 pips above the moving average, and then watch the market. You know, you, you just look for the market to uh, prove you right, to fail at the 200, come back down through the 100, and you get a nice trade. Uh, when the market moves above the uh, 200 here, you're looking for a confirmation or a move to the upside. What happens here? You end up getting out of the trade. Why? Because the if should rule, if the market breaks at the 200 bar moving average, we should go higher. If it doesn't, the market moves lower, and that's exactly what it is. So that's an example. That's a showing the 100 and the 200 bar moving average. And as we progress in our in our lessons, we're going to go through that in a little bit more detail. Uh, the next tool that we use is a trend line. This is the second of the three tools I use. And the trend line shows trends. If the positive slope, it's po the trend is higher. If it's negative, the trend is down. They also give clues to the end of the trend when the trend line is obviously broken. Trend lines also help define risk. Trend lines are also unambiguous. If the price is above the, uh, the trend line, the bias is bullish. If price is below, the bias is negative. Here's an example of the euro versus U.S. dollar. This happened uh, uh, you know, during the first week of May when the market was trending to the downside. We had a number of different points along, the, along the, uh, uh, this channel to the downside where the market had upside uh, uh, resistance, and we had down uh, on bottom side trend line support. And here the market breaks through the trend line, and what does it do? It does what it should do, and the market starts to move down. We break really hard to the downside, reach a new low of 125.21. But what happens here? The market fails. The market starts to move, and now it uses a trend line as support, moving up 
through the, the upper end of the trend line for the first time all week long. These are days, by the way, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. On Friday, the market moved above the uh, trend line, and we started to use the old trend line as support, and we closed above that trend line uh, on Friday. What did we do on Monday? We gapped higher. This gave you a clue, folks, that the market was probably oversold. It's probably a good time to take your profit, especially after this pretty steep decline of about 800 pips to the downside in the euro versus U.S. dollar. Look for these trend lines. that give you easy clues to know when the market is trending to non-trending. Uh, the, 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 um, uh, here's another one of the euro. Do this quickly. We broke through the trend line on Friday. Uh, we broke through that line uh, at this point right here at 2477. The market's been down ever since, uh, down to 2231. Uh, currently trading, I don't know where we're trading, probably in the 20s. Uh, the, the other, I know I'm running out of time here. Uh, another form of trend lines that I use is what I call a remembered line. And a remembered line is a non-sloping trend line. It's a horizontal line that gives clues for potential trends. And this, um, uh, this is the euro on a daily chart. And if you go back to October 2008, what was the low at that point? The low was 123.28, 123.34 uh, uh, in these two bars right here. This is an old remembered line. It was the last time the market was at this level. Now, if we come to today's chart and we look at uh, today's action, this is the five-minute chart, the market started to come down, and where do we find support? We found support against the 123, 29, 28, the 34 level, in fact, came right down to that level, moved up higher, and this market, when the market broke through this support level, this old low going back to 2008, this old remembered line, the market sold off rather dramatically. When the market started to correct, get through the 100-bar moving average here, move up to the 200, where did we stop? We stopped right at that 128, 23, 28 level. Again, that's go going back to October 2008. Market moved down, tested the 100, came back up to the 200, tested the 29 when we broke through that level. Market moved up, came back down, moved up, and came back down. Uh, let me see if I can help. Uh, 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 I'll put up the chart here real well. Uh, can you see that chart right there? Probably not. But uh, the, 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 uh, the current... Cur the current price uh, of the euro, uh, if you look at your chart and you put a line in at 23.29, you can see how the market moved away from that level um, as well. Uh, so um, now let's look at the, um, the the third tool that I use. And the third tool I use is a Fibonacci retracement. Again, a Fibonacci retracement uh, can be used as a target level down the road ahead. Retracements are points of uh, where the market corrects to, so they become targets. And they also can become targets in a trend as well. Uh, if the market's moving higher and it's going to trend lower, we have to get to the 38.2, get to the 50%, get to the 61.8. They also give clues regarding continuation of a trend. If you break a, a Fibonacci retracement line, you can you go to the next one. That becomes the next target or a next exit along the road. The third thing that Fibonacci retracements do is they give ca uh, traders confidence to trade counter-corrective trends with more con with more confidence. Um, you know, it's it's important to uh, be able to um, uh, understand or have an idea when the market may correct two or three big figures. They also help to define risk. And I, I already mentioned the key Fibonacci levels of 38.2, 58, 61.8. Those are the ones that I like to like to use. We're going to go into these more detail um, as uh, these uh, lessons progress. But uh, one, one chart here uh, that I do have, and this is the euro uh, uh, on an hourly chart, uh, and this is a recent data as well. Uh, but you can uh, see here, uh, actually this goes back to that same chart where the market was trending to the downside. When the market retraced on Monday, where do we go right up to? We went right up to the 50% retracement on the opening, and the market found sellers against that level. Why? Because it was a low-risk trading opportunity. If the market moved higher, they would have been buying their position out. market moves down, where do we come up to? The 61.8% retracement. Notice we get through that 61.8% retracement. Well, we do something very similar to the move right down here. We fail at that level, and the market comes back between, below the 100-bar moving average and then starts its move to, down to the downside, using, again, the 50% retracement as a level of retracement at this point, and that starts to move to the downside uh, for the euro versus U.S. dollar. I'm just touching on these technical tools that we're going to use, uh, folks. We, we are going to uh, take this, these lessons further but what, what was important here today was just introduce you uh, to the idea and the foundations for being successful, what you need to be successful as a trader, and the progression of, of an idea of how 
You can best better uh, trade trends to anticipate trends and to stay on the trends. And if you can do that, you're going to be much more successful as a trader. And I can tell you that's the key. That's the key is to be able to trade the trends, to stay on the trends, be greedy when you have to be greedy, and to let the market take you uh, to where it wants to go. Now, um, uh, uh, are there any questions uh, as we uh, finish up here today? I'll be able to, happy to take any any questions that you may, you may have. I understand it's more of a lesson than uh, market market analysis, but uh, uh, we'll get to that as time goes on. Okay, thanks, Greg. Well, that was a fantastic first lesson for everybody. I'm sure everyone's going to really enjoy that one. You'll be able to watch the rebroadcast on fxstreet.com. Uh, so there were a couple questions that came in. Um, this is the first question that you want to answer, Hardy Stacks question. He'd like to know what you think is the lowest moving average you would use in your trading. And, I mean, I know the answer to that, but maybe, Greg, you want to reiterate. All right. Uh, Hardy, um, uh, can, uh, what, what, I, what I will use is the 100-bar uh, moving average and the 500-bar moving – or the 100-bar moving average and the 200-bar moving average. And I use it on three different charts. I'll use it on a five-minute chart. I'll use it on an hourly chart. And I'll use it on a daily chart. And the point of, of uh, uh, and some people may think that that's short term, medium term, and long term. But what I'm trying to do uh, is find those areas uh, where um, there is a um, uh, uh, where there is a low risk trading opportunity. That is, if I can trade against the uh, five minute uh, moving uh, or uh, the, the five minute uh, hundred bar moving average, um, I'll do I'll do that. Why? Because it's a it's a low risk uh, trading opportunity. Uh, for instance, you know, on on this uh, this chart right here, if I if I were to buy a, br a breakout of the 100 bar moving average here, um, what is my risk? The risk is if the market goes below it. So I don't necessarily care if it's five minute hourly or daily. I just want want to you know find those uh, low risk trading opportunities that are against what I call the borderline. These are borderline trading opportunities where the price uh, approaches a key resistance or key support level using our moving averages. Um, since the FX is a fast market, why don't you use a shorter moving average? It's a 50 moving average versus a 20 moving average instead of 100. On any thoughts? You know, I, I, what, what, what I'm trying to do, folks, is not to necessarily scalp the market. Um, uh, it, it's to find those opportunities where the market is going to uh, trend. And if you can catch these trends, like here, um, you are going to, uh, you're going to find your uh, account of value. Uh, go up uh, higher and higher, and this is what this is this is why this is only this is only part one of a series. What I'm going to uh, be getting into in the next uh, part is the way uh, or the clues that the market gives you by using these moving averages in order to uh, anticipate a trend. Now, now this this setup right here that we see right here isn't necessarily setting up a trend type move. Now, yes, indeed, the market did trend to the top. Uh, but there are other setups in the market uh, that uh, the 100 and the 200 bar moving average really give you some nice, really nice clues as far as a, the possibility of a trend. Now, this is a this is a this is a formation that I call the goalpost, and this indeed does tell you uh, if the market's going to trend. But it's not necessarily the biggest uh, trend type of uh, uh, setup that that I that I would use um, in the, uh, in my analysis. Uh, so I don't want, you know, I don't want to use a moving average that's really quick. Um, that's more um, for intraday traders. And, and again, what I find is that where do traders lose the most money? They lose the most money trading trends. And I think if you're too quick in some of your moving averages, uh, you're, you're going to be, you're going to be getting yourself off of those trend type moves. You're going to be having that fear of success. Uh, and the, when the 20 passes, you know, when the market goes to the 20 bar moving average, you're going to be saying, oh, we're going to have a correction. And then it only corrects five pips from there and turns around and goes the other way. So you have to be careful in what you use. And and, and uh, uh, that's why I use the, the 100 and the 200. I hope that answers your question. All right. Uh, all right. Let's see. Uh, Ron, I understand you're using 100 uh, about a buy, but can you tell? When the price is going back to the hundred or reverse trend, no, you don't know when the market is going to uh, reverse, Ron. Um, uh, you know that's the old if should rule. Uh, what and if you watch the market long enough and you look at some of these markets, um, what you what you have to understand is that okay, it, you know it, it doesn't work all the time. And what you have to do as a trader, however, is you have to give yourself a little bit of a bit of a buffer. 
when you have the initial trade. So if you come up to, let's say, this uh, uh, this 100 bar moving average here, and we go to the 100 bar moving average, and you sell it against um, uh, uh, this level right right here, um, and the market uh, goes up, and this is a 05, and this goes to, you know, I don't know, 20, uh, or this is 07 where it breaks and it goes up to 20. That's 13 pips. So if you have a bias to the downside, um, you have to give yourself, a, when, the, when the initial trade is put on, you know, maybe 15 pips or even like 20 pips uh, if uh, with that bias that you have uh, to the downside. And and if you do, you know, and the market does reverse, you can take advantage of this uh, move to the upside. So it's, you know, this, is, this isn't necessarily, you know, a lot of times it does come to an exact type thing right here, but you have to give yourself a little more uh, room. You have to give yourself to uh, a little move to allow the trade uh, to actually uh, materialize. I'm just using this as an example. I don't necessarily think that, um, that because this market is trending here and the market comes up to the 100, that this would necessarily be a good selling opportunity. Why? Because a trend leads to non-trend and could lead to a, a, you know, a consolidation or a move to the top side, in which case that's what it did, you know, held the support here and then started to move to the top side. Uh, but that, uh, was a point of note that you must help you on trading. But the, uh, I feel like the, uh, uh, most lose on non-trending markets. Most lose on non-trend, no, most lose on trending markets. Sorry. Yeah, most people lose, lose money on trending markets. That is, uh, that is the theme here. Uh, that's a, that's a fact. And, and, um, if you, um, if you, th if you think of it in terms of, uh, okay, well, everyone's supposed to take a trend, a uh, trade the trends, right? And, uh, but we also know, you know, someone asked earlier in the thing, how many, what is the percentage of people that lose money in the market? And quite frankly, you know, I mean, you can read any book and the, and the percentage of people that lose money, um, is a, is, um, you know, fairly, fairly high percentage. I don't know what it, what it is, but it's a fairly high percentage. That's, you know, that, that's what makes it difficult. Is not, but then again, life is difficult. You know, if you open a restaurant, 70% of the restaurants going to fail, uh, as well. So you have to work at it. This is a job. This is, this is, this takes knowledge. This is why we try to build the foundation. So, so when you have to, uh, so if, if the goal and, and all the books say trade the trends and most people lose money, guess what they're not doing? Trading the trends. So you have to try to tr think and anticipate how to, how and when to trade the trends. Um, but I won't think quite when they find a trade comes out trades lose money. Yep. Um, yeah. And, uh, yes, I am, uh, well, I'm coming out with a book. I'm writing a book. Uh, we don't use a short of I hope this webinar is recorded. Um, it's excellent. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It should be recorded. Um, DD stand for, uh, FXDD. What does DD stand for? Uh, FX direct dealer. Um, you know, anyway, that's from day one. Uh, I was with the firm from day one, by the way. Um, uh, and it's, uh, it's just a direct dealing, uh, system. So you, you deal direct on, on foreign exchange. Are there any more questions out there or any, any that I missed? All right. Good. Uh, do you offer an example UK account to trade without, uh, FIFO, et cetera? Um, you, um, send us an email, Harley. We'll put you in touch with an account representative. Um, you know, we, we do have ways that, um, uh, uh, that you get over the FIFO at yeah, greg at fxdd.com. Not for this, uh, here. All right. Well, uh, thank you very, uh, very much. Uh, the next, uh, the next webinar is going to be in another, not next week, but the week after. Uh, so, um, but it's going to be, uh, we're going to be taking the steps forward, folks. Uh, as you can see here today, we started off with a mission statement. You know, we went to attributes, or we start with attributes of successful traders, mission statement, game plan, rules, um, and then tools. And we're going to really uh, develop uh, uh, how to look at the market, how to anticipate trends, uh, so that you can stay on the trends. I really appreciate everyone coming out. And uh, look forward to, if you have any questions, just send me an email at greg at fxdd.com. And, uh, of course, if uh, uh, you want to open an account or think about an open account, this is the right time, 8% uh, bonus. So I'll sign off, give the ball back to Sean. All right. Thank you so much, Greg. What a fantastic training. Everybody has really, I think, benefited from that. So, again, the next training class that we're going to be doing is on Thursday, May 27th. That's it. 10 a.m. in the morning. I'm not exactly sure what time the GMT time is. I think that's 1400 GMT. And again, thank you very much to FX Street and Mod for putting this all together and having Greg on for a fantastic training. You'll get the rebroadcast on fxstreet.com. I'm Sean Powell. Thank you so much, and we'll see you for the next webinar.